Welcome to AVR Microcontroller Lecture Series. In this video, I'll be going to explain you Harvard and Von Neumann architecture in this video, where with this AVR family, it is having Harvard architecture. So in this video, I'll explain you the basic differences in between Harvard and Von Neumann architecture. As well as in this video, we will see a complete detail of Harvard architecture with AVR microcontroller. And Von Neumann architecture is also referred as Princeton architecture. So both of this architecture with basic details will be studied here step by step. So let us have the basic architecture which is there with Von Neumann architectures first. So in that we have CPU over here and in this CPU you can observe these are address lines and these are data lines. So address lines that I have shown from A0 to A19 and data line that I have shown from D0 to D7. But these address lines and data lines that will differ with respect to different versions of controller. Right. But here I have to one practical example where these many address lines and data lines are there. Now with one human architecture you will be finding there is data memory which is interfaced it with CPU and there is code memory that is interfaced it with CPU. In data memory usually we use RAM and erasable programmable ROM while in code memory we use read only memory means ROM and these address lines and data lines that we interface it with this data memory and code memory with one human architecture. You can observe here I have shown that interfacing. But this architecture is having some disadvantages that one should understand first. You see as if I use this data memory to have access of this CPU at that time this code memory that will stay in ideal mode. So for example as if this RAM is accessing or fetching data from the CPU via address and data lines. In that case, this code memory will stay in ideal mode. And when this code memory is accessing address and data line for the CPU, in that case, this data memory that will stay in ideal mode. So one can say at the same time, this CPU cannot provide services to this data memory and code memory. And as if you see Harvard architecture, then here we have a CPU. It is also having address and data lines. We interface that with data memory and code memory where we connect that along with addresses and data you can see. But there is one advantage which is there with this Harvard architecture that is see this data memory is associated with different addresses compared to the addresses which is there with this code memory. So what happens is you can be finding at the same time this data memory and code memory can access the CPU. So CPU perform tasks for both of this memory and it can execute the content whatever content that we are loading and storing in these memories. Right. So you see this data memory that takes addresses and it executes data bidirectionally you can see. While with this code memory, it is ROM where we store fixed program. So what it does, it takes addresses and based on that, it gives data to CPU. When you run this code memory during that time period, we cannot change data of this code memory. So it is just a unidirectional data that one can see while this data memory that is RAM or erasable programmable ROM. So that is having data which is there in bidirectional mode. You can observe it over here. So this is just a basic advantage that one should know. Like with Harvard architecture, data memory and code memory can access CPU at the same time while in one human that is not possible. That's why Harvard architecture is more popular with microcontroller families. Now I'll explain you detailed explanation of AVR Harvard architecture. So in AVR Harvard 
hardware architecture you'll be finding we have a cpu over here so in this cpu there is this is arithmetic logic unit that is used to perform arithmetic task this is program counter which is used to store next address of instruction here we have instruction decoder that is to decode instructions and there are many general purpose resistors integrated with cpu and along with this cpu in harvard architecture we have program flash rom and size of this program flash rom is 32k and if you see detailed memory in that case you'll be finding that is 16k cross 2 means slot of 16k cross 1 and 16k cross 1 is there in parallel so it is 16k cross 2 or one can say it is there with size of 32k so this is our program memory here we have data memory so that is SRAM static RAM and erasable programmable ROM and here we have timers associated with this CPU and after that here there are some interrupt unit which is used to interface peripherals there are ports and other peripherals connected with this CPU now see how it is connected so with this program uh, data memory there are 8 bit data bus and 16 bit address bus and control bus is used to control all those peripherals you can see it over here right and this AVR Harvard architecture supports 8 bit data so you can see 8 bit data bus that is been shown over here but if you observe with this program memory 16 bit data is been shown so there is some contradiction that you might be having like how does it has 16 bit data so as I have said this memory is bisected parallelly where 32 K memory now that is there in parallel where 16 K cross 1 16 K cross 1 that is how it is there so 16 bit that is there in parallel with data bus and that one can fetch it in this CPU right so this is how 16 data bus is there practically this cpu supports only 8 bit data right but to fetch program from this program flash from 16 data bus can be fetched at the same time while if you observe 32k memory so for that it has requirement of 2 to the power 15 means 32k so 15 address lines are required for this and with different families you will be finding these address lines are getting enhanced so this is how harvard architecture is there with this avr family now here one thing that one should understand see this avr microcontroller that is very essential in terms of understanding of any other microcontroller so once you have basic idea about this microcontroller definitely you can be able to study any other microcontroller so easily and here on this channel you will be finding complete lecture series of AVR microcontroller so that will be definitely going to help you to understand microcontroller series and this will also improve your understanding regarding embedded system so just go through this video series definitely that will be going to help you out thank you so much for watching this video and your suggestions are always welcome